Well, good morning and welcome to Grace Time. I am Leland Shipp, pastor of Grace Place Assembly in Inverness, Florida. How are you doing this morning? It is Tuesday, July 19th. And the question becomes, are you ready to take our journey for the day? Uh, this morning, we're going to have ourselves a peace talk. I mean, uh, who doesn't want harmony and calmness in their lives? Uh, would you would you like to have more harmony and calmness of your body, mind, and spirit? We all could use some of that these days, I think, right? So did you know that almost all of the Apostle Paul's letters start with the phrase, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's with good purposeful reason. And as we study the scriptures, we learn that peace is defined as a blessing from God. And it flows with his character. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, and the grace and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus and I often wonder why someone would want to live or live to be <laughs> to live to be in a relationship with another person where there is hardly ever any peace uh, I think that that would be a tough situation to live in and as I value my peace uh, have you ever heard someone say well I don't do drama well, that's me, uh, but I value being able to sit in peace and quiet, uh, and if it's alone, okay. Uh, some of the best writing ideas I come, that come to me or what I come up with especially happen either sitting in peace and quiet, but always when I'm out in God's creation because it's so peaceful, and there is something about the peace of God that enhances so many things uh, in our lives. And as Paul wrote here in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, it is those who choose prayer and trust during these noisy, anxious moments uh, who will experience peace. And there are there's three important positives that this peace offers. First, God's peace is uh, supernatural and unexplainable. It is truly amazing how God uh, can and will respond during times of difficulty. And then second, God's peace will guard your hearts for a, for a long time. See, in time, the heart has been viewed as something to protect at all costs. And in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 3, uh, Proverbs, uh, I'm sorry, 4 and verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issue of life so you see even in the Old Testament they're talking about protecting the heart now lastly God's peace will guard your minds in Christ Jesus now this concept is connected with the love for God and, and others so this includes unity as well and as we have studied on Grace Time previously and at Grace Place Paul was concerned about the unity in the church in Philippi. But in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27, I want to share, 127, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And then in 2 2, fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And then, of course, 2 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, as we see, Paul's mentioning about the mind here. So, why did I share these three verses with you? My point in sharing these verses. Uh, is to reveal to you how Paul mentions the mind. 
and, and mentions it numerous times, and, and we can see Paul making a statement here regarding the mind. Uh, and that unity in the midst of disagreements requires a mind controlled by God's peace. Now, the peace of God, which could be expressed as a, a tranquil state, if you will, of appreciation and faith, but for those who submit to and trust the Word of God and Christ now, the peace of God is like a blended smoothie, if you will, of humility and courage in order for us to experience God's peace. So we also must keep in mind that the whole entire Bible is written for us, but not every verse is addressed to us uh, uh, or written about us. All scripture is profitable now, but not every passage is for our participation or obedience. And in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Now, if God is naturally peaceful, then to appreciate God is to live in his peace. Listen, it is kind of like a, a golfer, or somebody starting to golf. They go and they, may t they should take lessons by taking lessons from a professional, and then they can be, if they're disciplined, then they won't allow uh, bad habits to creep into their game, so to speak. But they will enhance the good habits that they've learned from that professional. Uh, and, and then as they play more and more rounds of golf, what should happen? The better that they will become at playing golf, right? So the nearer we move toward God, the more of his peace we can experience. Do you see how that works? And then the more that we exercise that peaceful setting or that peaceful muscle, if you will, the more we live at peace, regardless of our circumstances. Uh, where do you find specific instructions on how to get closer to God? Well, the Bible, the Word of God, provides us with specific guidance uh, about how to get closer to God. And in James chapter 4, James 4, verses 7 through 8, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So, uh, you see, as we grow in our relationship with God, many, <laughs> many positive attributes will begin to just come into our lives as we do what? Grow that relationship with God. Uh, in Hebrews, I want to share with you out of Hebrews, I think I do, or I may not have marked it. <laughs> Well, uh, I'll tell you that there's some Hebrews that I'll add to the scripture or to the screen later. Check it out because when we grow, I want the whole point was when we grow in our knowledge of the wisdom and prosperity of God's love uh, for us, our minds and spirits develop a restful faith of His power and grace. And we will begin to recognize and realize that God really will make all things work together for our good. And that is his purpose. And he will be achieved and it will be achieved through us, you see. So in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse, verses 18 and 19, Ephesians 3 verses 18 and 19, uh, having their understanding darkened, um, uh, being uh, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. You see that? It's talking about the blindness of their heart. 
but then we get into we can be able to comprehend all the saints what is the width and length and depth and Paul utilized the length width and depth a bunch and and it's something that that requires God given spiritual strength uh, and that Paul utilizes the phrase all saints 11 different times in his epistles and and so this all saints he he always referred to entire groups of believers paul then shares every possible physical dimension here in this uh in this verse about the length and depth and then in the old testament i will tell you that you will find that it uses and talks about the the length and depths but it's usually with measurements paul uses these figurative terms here in relationship to god's love that can be measured. Now, believers can grow in their understanding of God's love. But in verse 19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The love of Christ, to know this in a way that goes beyond mere information now. This does not imply that knowledge is unimportant. Instead, Paul wants the Ephesians and us now to understand. He Paul's writing to the Ephesians, but it's for us to to understand that God's love is ultimately beyond our comprehension, and we will never completely understand it. Uh, Paul suggests here that true godly love is not limited to more knowledge; it must be expressed in action. Paul calls love the greatest of God's gifts. And scripture speaks often of God's love, mostly informing us that God is love. As always, Paul desires something here, right? And Paul desires for his readers to grow in God's love. But Paul has a plan. Paul has a specific purpose in verse 19 here. Uh, Paul utilizes the phrase, fullness of God, which is mentioned only one other time in the Bible, and that's in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 19. Colossians 1 and verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And so there you see, fullness should dwell. And here the focus is on the greatness of God, which uh, exists in Christ and this clearly labels the Lord Jesus Christ as divine and in a similar manner in these verses in Ephesians Paul wants his audience to be filled with Jesus Christ I mean as much as possible now Paul knows that love in both thoughts and actions is the key to this taking place and in the life, and especially in the life of the believer now. So we see how we can have harmony and calmness in our lives. Uh, I'm sorry the devil took over and, and botched it a little bit, but I hope this lesson has assisted you in your, in your life today about where we can get this peace of God and, and, and grow closer to Him. And it's amazing how... All these different things start to come about when we start taking the initiative and pursuing a relationship with God. And you saw how these positive attributes, for example, how God is love and love comes and flows with us and gets in big part, becomes a big part of our lives. And then the patience and all these different attributes. So I just hope that even though Satan botched me and had me read the wrong scripture, that you got something out of this message this morning. So let's pray together. Holy Father, we just thank you so much for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. And Lord, I just ask that you just continue to lead and guide us closer to you and help us to develop and grow that relationship. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless and, and let us have a safe week. And it is in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me here on Grace Time. And I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment, like, share, whatever you want to do with this. Uh, it is very important to get that peace of God in your life, to have peace. 
And I just uh, will be back here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., the good Lord willing. And until next time, may God bless you.